Welcome back, one and all, to this, the new Cork Stats YouTube channel with your host, John Legazer, the big dude with the big mouth for the big apple, b -b 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 big Johnny Stud, coming to you worldwide from Brooklyn, New York. As always, thank you for joining me here in the new format. I've really dug this, you know, allowing me to incorporate charts and some graphics into these advanced pitching breakdowns that I really think it's important. You know, I can get off into the weeds on the podcast or audio, and sometimes it leaves people in the dust. They still have questions, and I'm hoping this is really going to lay out all the work. I hope you enjoyed the Walker Bueller video. Get up in the comments. Let me know how I'm doing. And please subscribe to the video. I'm going to be bringing these to you as often as possible all the way through draft season as we prepare for the 2022 MLB Fantasy Baseball draft season. Can you tell? I'm excited to be here. I really love doing this. Let's get into today's topic. And it's Zach Wheeler. Well, full disclosure, I was in an early drafts champions it was early in the second round. I wanted to decide between Bueller and Wheeler as my SP1. I did choose Bueller, but if you saw my last video, you'll know why I had some buyer's remorse. I'm going to walk you through Wheeler and why I think I may have gone this direction, or should say I will go this direction the next time I have to make that choice. So let's get into whether or not I think Zach Wheeler can build off where he left off last year or even improve for 2022. Last year, he was phenomenal. And if you're new to my work, you get all the nuance, all the context that you could stomach because I think that is the name of the game. I like to break players and teams into compartmentalized baskets. That way, no singular stat will kind of tip the scale and force our opinion in a way that maybe it shouldn't. So those are your surface statistics, of course, then discipline, elevation, and batted ball quality. And hopefully that'll walk us through a more balanced way, balanced perspective towards a player's profile. So when you look at Zach Wheeler, there was not a single chink in the armor, not a hole in the game last year. Made all of his starts, 213 and a third innings, 278 ERA, 1.01 whip, backed up with a 284 XFIP, everything you want to see. The swing and strike rate was there, 14% on the season. The chase rate, more than 3.5%, better than average, over 35. It keeps the ball down on the ground. It's low, it's slow. He's a grill master, man. Those ribs are falling off the bone. 50% ground ball rate to only 27 and a half fly ball. Hard hit stats off the page. I want to stop and give you a little bit of that context that I was speaking about. I use the two main pillars for hard hit accounting. That's fan graphs and stat cast. It's really important to understand the difference. Fan graphs uses baseball information solutions. There's a subjective element there. Stat cast uses a raw 95 mile an hour metric. Each have their flaws, but that's why we want to use both for the max amount of context, and that will normally guide the next piece of our investigation. Let's get back into the batted ball quality there, where it's just a really hard to get a stick on anything. Wheeler is offering the bow rate below five, X Woba at 256, expected Woba on contact at 329, and then of course limiting home runs less than three quarters of a home run per nine for Zach Wheeler across the board. He was excellent, but those are output stats. Let's get some input going on to try and forecast how we think Zach Wheeler will perform next year. The first thing that I think we always want to be looking at, like we did with Bueller, is the fastball. And the center of that analysis revolves around velocity. We see Zach Wheeler's fastball velo up year over year over year over year. You really don't need a background in technical analysis on Wall Street to see that this is extremely bullish. And what is the subsequent effect of extra velo? Boom, gains in the swing and miss. We did see a tick down in 2020. I'm writing that off to a small sample set. We saw him regain those swing and misses really important on the fastball in particular so we have some pitchers fastballs going in the south direction man wheelers is looking better and better year over year for the 31 year old right he's still showing he's got gas in the tank once we get past velo the next thing we want to be looking at especially after last year's crackdown 
is the spin rate. Now, it's not our intention to point a finger of blame at anybody, but as an analyst, it's my job, my duty, really, to focus on objective data points just to see if there's anything actionable. Look at the spin rate year over year for Wheeler. It's stagnant, really nothing to worry about. And then if you get to a more granular level by game, again, focus on June, focus on July, no real impactful changes. Not to say that doesn't mean he hasn't done anything wrong in his life, right? We're not here to exonerate nor convict anyone. That's not the point. We're just looking to see if what we saw can continue. I feel the data is in. Zach Wheeler's fastball was unaffected by the crackdown. That is a huge point of focus opposed to Walker Bueller, whose fastball, in my opinion, is going in the wrong direction, which would make it harder to repeat, especially with his usage. So speaking of usage, let's get into Wheeler's arsenal. Right, So we got over the fastball, let's get into the arsenal, and the first thing I wanted to focus on was the slider. We noticed last year in 2021, he had it spiked to a career high in usage, it really shouldn't be a much of a surprise, I was glad to see him make that a primary pitch. Now generally these are subjective, I usually consider anything over 22% use being primary, and again some pitchers have extreme hyper usage of a single pitch, like Bueller who can get the fastball up over 50% of the time. Wheeler does not do that. So for me, I'm considering the slider now as a primary pitch being over that 22% use, his highest of his career. Last year, it was a money pitch. Again, let's stop really quick for a bit of context you get with me. I've developed my own kind of triple slash when it comes to individual pitches, usage, X slug and whiff rate, idea being how often is it deployed, what kind of contact is made, and then those all important swings and misses. And the slider was just phenomenal. 25% use, 344 X slug to 30% whiff rate, checking all the boxes. Good to see him putting that pitch forward. I was wondering why he ditched it in 2020, and to be honest, I'm not really sure why. If we go back to 2019, the slider's been great. 15% swing and strike, 30% whiff, 29% hard hit, 6% barrel, really nothing to complain about and what i particularly like like it is when it's being used against lefties it's very effective against lefties we generally think of sliders being used only low and away not the case for wheeler here check it out i'm going to bring it up for you on the screen he brings the slider up on the rib cage of lefties remember here we're looking at the pitcher at the catcher view sorry so he's jamming lefties in on the ribs making it very hard with that break for them to do anything with that pitch combined with the targeted approach when I mention targeted approach, generally what I mean is deploying certain pitches against certain handed hitters. Wheel are always known for using the change up, not exclusively, but really almost exclusively against lefties. Let's say 86 to 90 percent of his change ups go to lefties, right? So that's kind of a sign of the targeted approach. And in 2021, that pitch very effective against lefties. Only a 10.5 percent swing strike rate, which is fine. Because no barrels allowed in a 119 X Woba. So not every pitch has to be the wipeout strikeout pitch. Sometimes you're looking to roll guys over, weak contact, get a double play, or just get out of a jam if you're getting worked. So now that the slider is back, that paired with the changeup has made him extremely effective against lefties. And then if you go over to the other side, there's something that I picked up as far as righties. If you look at Wheeler's profile as far as deployment goes, at least, and it goes back to 2020 when he started started throwing the sinker to righties only. Before that, it was more of a balanced a, a, attack plan. But once we hit 2020, it was a hyper usage to righties. 95% or more of his last 840 thrown went to righties. It go back to 2020. That sinker had a 10% swing strike rate, 57% ground ball, 2% barrel, and a 267 expected Woba on contact. Again, another pitch being used to get out of trouble. He's really done a very good job with that pitch getting righties in. Now, sometimes it's up on the rib and sometimes it's down. It's not really a sweeping pitch where it's down and out of the zone, but it really gets in on the hands and really jams them. And that was the last point of this kind of arsenal shift that we've seen is something that I like to refer to as attacking the three corners. And I know when you think intuitively about the strike zone, there are only two low corners. I like to think of the center point on bottom black as a third point of attack. There's a little rhyme to help you remember it. 
it's hard enough to cover the two sides of a plate, two corners, but then when you really have to worry about that curve dropping off the table, because if you look at that, it's off the table there. You're not getting that one in the strike zone almost ever. It is really, really tough for righties to do anything against Wheeler because of the deceptive elements that these pitches add. They're breaking in all different directions, and that's the theory behind the three-corner attack. He can go down and away he can go down and in and then sometimes you see it coming straight at you and that thing falls right off the table so i gotta tell you man going through zach wheeler's profile there is nothing to not like at all i am backing zach wheeler as a, my Cy young candidate for the year he is an sp1 for sure could be the sp1 overall especially if philly cleans up things in that bullpen and get him a few more W. So, everyone, that's my take on Zach Wheeler. I have Zach Wheeler over Walker Bueller for the 2022 MLB Fantasy Baseball season. Get up in the comments or on Twitter. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you indifferent? What do you like about the videos? What can I add? What can I subtract? I am here for you. So, I think that'll do it for me, Big Johnny at Cork Stats. Please remember to subscribe. And I think that'll do it, everybody. So, Enjoy the games. You enjoy your day. When we're done with those bookies, baby, <laughs> enjoy that pay. So I will see all of you soon. Please keep an eye on the channel. This is going to be coming at you hot and heavy as often as I can. Peace.